for the wonderful speech. Next week speaker is Yukdeja Aditi Nurish. She's a good artist who loves to listen to K-pop music. The title of her speech is The Beauty of Love. The Beauty of Love by Youth Leader Aditi. Can you hear me? A very warm good evening to all of you present here. Does anyone know the first domesticated animal? Dog. Dog. Yes. Dog. Yeah. Dogs are the first domesticated animal. You might have already guessed my topic by now. Dogs. The species that have superior sense of smell, sight, and instinct yet choose to serve humans. In countries such as Korea, Japan, and China, dogs are viewed as kind protectors. In the Chinese zodiac, the dog plays an important role as one of the years. Anyone over here who was born in 1970, 1982, or 1994? Well, none of you here are born in the year of the dog. <laughs> I personally really like dogs. People think they're scary and mean, but honestly they're very kind, provided you are kind to them. My father, unfortunately for me, doesn't like dogs. He once told me, either a dog will stay in the house or he will stay in the house. <laughs> Not a hard choice. I chose the dog. <laughs> My sister, being the North Pole while I'm the South Pole, isn't really fond of dogs either. She thinks dogs are scary and mean. But I don't think so. Do you think so? No. No, no see? But um, I don't get to see dogs at all. This country seems to be really fond of cats. Uh, whenever I go to India, I get to see my neighbor's dogs. Not, not even my dogs. I get to see my neighbor's dogs every now and then. I keep playing with them. Well, many of you here might have dogophobia, scientifically known as cyanophobia. But you'll have to put up with me for this. Anyway, how many of you know the story of Hachiko? Okay, for those who don't know, I'll narrate it up to you. And for those who are very weak with sad stories, you might want to keep a tissue box here. <laughs> One day, a lecturer in a university was returning from his job, and when and in the station, he found a lost puppy. He took the puppy into his house, our family, and named him Hachiko. As days went by, the lecturer trained, nurtured, and played with Hachiko. One day, when the lecturer was returning, and when he opened the station door, he found Hachiko sitting near the fountain in front of the station. He went back home and he tried to figure out how Hachiko had come out, and then he found a hole in the fence that Hachiko had made by digging the mud out from below the fence. So he filled mud into that hole, and then he went back to his house. The next day when he came out of the station again, he found Hachiko sitting there waiting for him. So he went back home and he fixed the hole again. This went on for a few more times and then afterwards he gave up. So from then on, every day he came out of the station, he could see Hachiko run and bark and fall on him, lick him and do everything a dog does. One day when he was giving a lecture, he collapsed. He, he was taken to the hospital and he was found, uh, it was reported that he was dead due to a heart attack. Hachiko was taken in by his daughter and his son-in-law. One day when the daughter woke up, she found Hachiko to be missing. She went to her father's old house, but Hachiko wasn't there. She searched all the town in vain. No one was there. But then she went to the fountain. She saw Hachiko sitting there, waiting for someone. Someone who was never going to come. She tried to convince Hachiko to eat. She tried to convince him to come back home, but he never came. He sat there, he waited, believing that his master was still alive. One day, in winter, he closed his eyes and he laid up, never to open them again. But he still lives and waits. You know how? There is a statue of Hachiko made right where he died, in hope that one day he will find his master and go back and rest him. Sad, isn't it? We humans think we are the smartest or the most erudite creatures on earth, yet why do we lack such emotions? Why do we trust nothing but ourselves? Why are we humans so selfish? We think that if we spend more time, time studying or finding things on the iPad or finding things on our tabs and PCs, we'll be more knowledgeable. But doesn't that mean we're just staying away from what is 
truly important? What is truly important in life? People say, sometimes people say knowledge, sometimes people say good job. But don't you think it's actually connection? Once we get a job, once we get our own lives, and once we get a tab or a PC, we forget that our lives match and intertwine with the ones around us. The ones around us then get ignored, and then we feel hurt. But it's too late before we realize. So don't forget, and don't regret, and don't fail to notice. You'll see the beauty of love, the beauty of love. Thank you.